What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Man Bites Film, episode 89. You didn't cut me off this week, you son of a bitch. I know. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I want to do it when you least expect it. That's why. Uh, you know, I feel like when it, on our 100th episode, you're going to cut me off. I know you are. You, <laughs> it's it's going to happen. <laughs> you can really just donkey punch him. Yeah, I'll just like nut no, punch him. He's just... not going to expect that. <sighs> As always, I am Brandon. Joining me is Tweedledum and Tweedled I know I said that in the wrong I'm order. I'm Tweedled D. No, you're Tweedledum. no, you're definitely Tweedledum. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it, see, we have voted two to zero. <laughs> this is not a democracy, bitches. That's that right. is Lewis. <laughs> it's it's a dictatorship, and the dictatorship is the host. And who's the host? Brandon. I am the god. I, I am, am the producer. Shut up, shut up, bitch. This is my domain. I have the power to censor you. This is my domain. That's <laughs> Lewis over there. Listen, you Putin-looking motherfucker. <laughs> That's just I love because I'm fucking bald. I you twice, and you don't say anything. That's Hi, William everybody. That's, that's William. <laughs> hi. The only man that's on Hello. my side. Did you say hi for me? Yes. <laughs> Fuck off. Let's go. Move it. Come on, moving you. What do we? What do we do, Brandon? What do we do here? What do you mean, move it? What What do we do? Move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Oh God, no, no! Please shut him up. Um, if you oh, yeah, moving you, let's go. I have the power to mute him. If you're joining, if you're joining us for the first time or the 89th time, we are a weekly movie podcast where we talk about movie news. We review one movie all together. And then at the end of the show, we review three individual movies. So, Lewis, uh, take it away with the movie news, even though there's none. Ha ha! I beat there you to is, it. There's an entire Academy Award nomination. See, yeah. I have the power to mute him. Stop <laughs> muting him. Stop being an asshole. No. So, uh, yeah, today I just want to talk about the Academy Awards because, yes, that that is the biggest thing that's coming up. This is our fucking Super Bowl. So, yes. Who gives a shit about the Oscars? I don't. Uh, I don't take it serious, but, you know, I do enjoy watching who the hell is going to be selected and who the Academy thinks that should be nominated for these awards. So I think there were definitely some big snubs this year. Oh, hell yeah. The biggest one is Rocketman by far. Yeah, Rocketman across the board definitely got snubbed. Absolutely got snubbed. But um, what do you guys think for best actor? Which one do you guys think is should be the... You know, the front runner. I'm going to say this already at the beginning. I don't watch movies in theaters, so take my opinion as a grain of salt. These two men go to the theater. I don't. (laughs) So we have Adam Driver for Marriage Story. We have Antonio Banderas from Pain and Glory. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. going out of order? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Why are you going out of order? This is killing me inside. What, what do you and mean? Like going... in price. It, okay. Yes. Oh, wait, wait. What what website are you guys on? Uh, Oscar.com? On... Doc, doc I'm on Google. No, I just literally went on Google.com and put Academy Awards 2020 so, nominee. That's why. Okay. okay and Jonathan on... Price is the least important out of all of them. He's the least likely to, to win. So I put him last. Um, I'm going to say it's between Adam Driver and Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I agree. I because I don't think they're going to give DiCaprio another one this close to already. Oh, hell given. no. See, he's covered for like the next 30 years. I think Adam <laughs> Driver is going to win it. Um, That's that's my, you know, whatever. You take it with a grain of salt. But I think that he's going to win it because his performance was bar none freaking phenomenal. <laughs> even though Joaquin Phoenix was fucking brilliant. I think it's going to go to Joaquin. All right. Okay. How about... Actor in a I mean, I would love role. to see Banderas win it. Like, I'm not going to lie. I would love to see Banderas win it. Yeah. But I think it's going to go to Joaquin Phoenix. Bitch, I'm, hi- I'm hijacking your segment. No, I'm just hijacking this little seg- this little piece right here. Uh, so, actor in a supporting role. I don't um, know. Tom that Hanks. one, I don't know. I, don't know. I, need, I don't know. I need to bring that up. There we go. Uh, okay, Anthony we got Tom Hanks. Hanks. Brad Pitt. Oh, damn. This son of a bitch is taking it from me. Shut your goddamn <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Tom, Tom Hanks supporting actor a bitch. in a movie where he plays. The- He's muted. <laughs> 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 
can he hear you when you mute him? Yeah, though? yeah, he can. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, this is when he hangs up, and then he's like, fuck, you're never doing this show ever again. Okay, so we got we got Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. We got Anthony Hopkins in The Two Popes, Al Pacino in The Irishman, Joe Pesci in The Irishman, and Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. William, are you there? <laughs> yeah, he's just stewing in his uh, disappointment in me. It's okay. Uh, ma, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with either Al Pacino or Brad Pitt. Uh, you guys there? I would probably say Brad Pitt, but I'm not sure. William, what do you think? Well, it cannot be Tom Hanks because he didn't crash a plane, so he's not gonna win. <laughs> Um, I don't think Pesci was enough in The Irishman really to, I mean, it, it, between Pesci and Pacino, I'd probably give it to Pacino, although he's won an, did Pesci ever win an award? I don't think he's ever won an Academy Award. I don't think so, but I don't think I this don't is a, a vehicle for that, honestly, not for him. <clears throat> well, I mean, for what DiCaprio won, it shouldn't have been for what, you know what I mean? And for what Denzel Washington won... There were much better movies that they were in that they should have been nominated and won. So I think this I is a clear cut Brad Pesci. Pitt. I could see this clear cut Brad Pitt win, and this will be mm-hmm. their their like uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, pity vote for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because I don't think it's going to win anything else. Yeah, but Pitt's already won an Academy Award, right? Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. He's a no, he's I a know, darling. Feel- I know, but I always go for the one that hasn't won one yet. That's what oh, I yeah, like. Oh, yeah, that's that's what you go for, but the Academy won't. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, oh. best picture. Put me what do you guys... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, my God, you're fucking... Wait, 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 wait. wait. If we're doing actors, we need to do actress next. Oh, do my we? God. Are we? Are we really going to fucking yeah. do this for every single goddamn thing? Yeah. Well, no, ah. I figured... I, I figured actor supporting actor, actress supporting actress, best picture... And then what, like best song? Yeah, I don't or think best, so. But oh whatever. wait, best animated, best animated. Yeah, because that's gonna divide us. Um, yeah. so best, best support. Actress. Let's do best supporting actress since we did best supporting actor. Um, no, we don't do best. Oh, God damn it! Now we need to go find so it. So we right, have cool. uh, Katie, uh, Kathy Bates, Margot Katie Robbie, uh, Scarlett Johansson, Florence Pugh, Laura, uh, Laura Dern. <laughs> I'm pew. sorry. Yeah, pew. pew. <laughs> I just, I just thought, like my my mentality was just like, oh look, Star well, Star Wars. Pew. Uh, pew. Sorry, I'm gonna. Scarlett Johansson has been nominated twice this year. I'm gonna say Laura Dern. 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 Uh, mind you, uh, Mer- uh Marriage Story. You haven't seen? Yes. No. Oh shit. Okay. Yes. But I'm, I'm gonna, gonna say her. Margot Robbie win for Bombshell. Eh, I haven't you watched it, so funny? I can't tell you. Know, you. you know that really threw me off for a second because I, um, Laura Dern is also in in uh, Little Women, and I thought that's what she was nominated for, not Marriage Story. Marriage Story. That threw me off real hard. That's eh. why I said Laura Dern. So I retract my statement. <laughs> I she do was not know. Great. Florence Pugh for Little Women. Pew. Pew. <laughs> is it really Pew, or are we just mispronouncing her name? No, it's Pew. Oh, Pew. Okay. Like, um, P-U, you know? Oh, yeah. She uh, she does a, a, an incredible... I could see her or... I'll go with her because, honestly, that's the only movie I've seen out of those. Uh, even though I'm, I'm going to be watching Marriage Story. I know, I know, I know. It's easy accessible. I don't know. I'd like to see Margot, but I think... I don't know. I think they would give it to Bates. I don't think she'll win for that. I think it would be Scarlett Johansson for JoJo. Oh, wait. She's for Richard Jewell. Yeah, no, I don't think Bates is going to win. Yeah, no, um, no. I think Scarlett no, Johansson I mean, will win it. I want to see everybody up in arms, and I want to see Scarlett Johansson win Best Supporting and Best Actress. That won't happen. I'm surprised, That'd be she's funny. Not, I'm surprised that Scarlett isn't uh, nominated for Marriage Story. She is. She is. Oh, she is? Yes. Best Actress. Oh, so let's oh, go okay. into that one. Uh, Charlize Theron for Bombshell. Okay. Uh, Renee Zellweger for Judy. Cynthia Erivo. That, 
that for Harriet? Zellweger, if you say it in a weird way, it's no. Like, we're moving on. We are moving on. <laughs> Scarlett we're not Johansson. Do like Arnold over here. Scarlett sorry. Johansson for Marriage Story, and okay. I okay oh, something Ronan okay. uh, for Little I, okay. Women. <laughs> I I was gonna say how do you say her name, and I just googled it. It's it's Irish, and I think it's pronounced uh, Shura or Sura, something like that. Shura. Okay, sure. What you said. Sure. Nor- sure. <laughs> sure. Um, hmm. I don't know. Because I hate it. Uh, what do you call it? Harriet. I finally saw that crap. It was it was pandering bullshit. Sure, and... sure. Sorry. Sure, sure. That's how you, I think you, how you pronounce her name. That sounds about right. I think I remember an interview and that's what they said to her. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that could be right. And I haven't seen Bombshell, so I don't know. But Charlize Theron always fucking, she's amazing in everything she does. So I wouldn't doubt that she could potentially pull off a, on a, an Academy win with that. Uh, well, okay. Go, not going off of fanfare, but going off on how the Academy could potentially work. I can see Harriet winning this award. Yeah, probably. You're right. Because it's the only minority that has been nominated in the annual de four category. Hmm. You're right. Mm-hmm. Very, very right. Okay. And there's already an uproar that I honestly think that um, Aquafina should have been nominated for her role in the movie that she won the oh Golden God, Globe. And I and fucking cannot... That... God, sorry. What? Oh, oh, the name? I can't what? take that name seriously, dude. Aquafina. Like, how? how? What? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know it means something completely different in her language, right? Yeah, it probably does. It just... It's like somebody saying, I can't take somebody like with the name Dank seriously, even though it means something completely different in Korean. Just saying, just putting it out there for Damn anybody dude. named Dank. Damn, dude. So, you know, I'm not gonna use, all the I'm times that you've been made fun of for not taking it seriously because of your name, Aquafina, I feel you. Anyway. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> that was great. Moving on. Um, um, let's do best director. What do you guys think for best? That's director? not even her fucking name. What best director? No, no Aquafina's name is Nora Loom. Yeah, Loom. Yeah, but she changed it to Aquafina. Why would you change it to that? What the it's like, fuck, it, man? Do you always want to be know. recognized as a born... fucking water brand. Why would you be born Guglielmo, but your parents decide to call you Dank? I don't fucking know. Just yeah. but like. I heard that that happened to somebody. Um, <laughs> so, best director. Best director. Uh, Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Todd nope. Phillips for Joker. Uh, bon John Hu for Parasite. Martin Scorsese for The Irishman. Sam Mendes for 1917. So, I'm seeing 1917. I'm sorry, respect for everybody else, but I'm going with Mendes. Just because of the way that this movie was shot, it it was fucking phenomenal. Yeah, but it will be cinematography, not or editing, not uh, director. I think it's gonna end up going to Scorsese or oh. uh, what do you call it, uh, Tarantino. Yeah, I, I don't agree with it. Wins. I'm surprised Jojo it Rabbit won't. isn't nominated for best director. I haven't seen Parasite. I've heard it's incredible. It's gorgeous. And I just added it to my Voodoo account today. So, Oh my god, you fucking beautiful human being. Thank you. <laughs> god damn it. But Voodoo Par- is Brendan's movie theater. Yeah, right. Dude, straight up. You have no idea. Parasite <laughs> is is nominated um, for Best Foreign win. Picture. Yeah, I think so it's going to win. win. That, so win. I don't think it's going to win Best Director. It'd be yeah. great if it does. Don't get me wrong. But, but it won't. I don't think they're going to give him two awards. And Todd Phillips will not win for this. He oh, will not. Also, Parasite is nominated for Best Movie. Not just Best Foreign Movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, so it would one, be baby. great. Absolutely great to see Parasite win all three Oscars. Scarlett Johansson win both her categories. Like, just double them up. Just as they're standing up there, a taking an award, be like, yo, by the way, you also won for these two. So instead of the 30 seconds, you get a minute 30. Go ahead. So I... 
But um, I mean, I don't. Don't get me wrong. I liked Irishman, but I think it's very cliche to give it to Scorsese one for the Irishman. Yeah, but I it's gonna be that, like a lifetime achievement well, award for him. Yeah, pretty much. Just give him a lifetime achievement award with all the movies he ever directed on them, and he'll be happy and call it a day. I think that Todd Phillips could win Best Director. It would also give the uh, comic book genre, I guess, some validity <laughs> to, you know, cinema. But, oh, my God. Oh, my God. How much would that suck if Scorsese lost to a comic book movie? Fuck! I just that thought about funny. that. That would be funny. Holy shit, dude. Scorsese loses to the Joker. I will laugh my balls off if that happens. Oh, uh, you have no idea how happy I am just thinking about this. I, like, I had a crappy day and it was just a... <laughs> Whatever, Hollywood man. Hollywood, hearing this, make it happen. We'll shut up a lot of people. Not necessarily people that we're currently talking with. Hey, you know what? At but least it's not, a Mar- it's not a Marvel oh, my, movie. It's, my, um, it's okay. not a Marvel movie. It's, moving it's on, still, like a good okay. Moving on, yeah, so moving on. Uh, best yeah, cinematography: I, Robert Richardson for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Robert give Prieto. Give me a second to bring it up. There we go. Robert Prieto. Uh, I'm sorry, Rodrigo Prieto for The Irishman. Roger Deakins for 1917. Yep. Jaren Blaschke for The Lighthouse, and Lawrence Shear for The Joker. I think it's going to be... This is the only one that I... Cinematography? Probably I 1917. 1917 or The Lighthouse will be up. I was going to say the yeah. same fucking thing, Lewis. Same I thing. I can see it. I'd like to see 1917, though, because that was definitely... Uh, I, yeah, like, I've I, never my... seen a movie like this. I'm but you've go never watch seen a movie 19... like The Lighthouse, either. The Lighthouse is yeah, fucking great. I'm, I'm going to go see 1917 this week, this weekend, hopefully, if I don't have the plague. Um, uh, but definitely I could see 1917 winning and then the lighthouse, that would be like my second choice. Cause the lighthouse is definitely very unique. Yeah. So let's do the last one. The behemoth that is best picture. So wait, you wait, have, wait, wait, wait. no, 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 we, we got it. We're going to do animated. No, fuck that animated. Movie. No, no, whoa, no. Whoa. You, said we, you said we were doing animated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know what's going to win is how to train your dragon. You sure? Yeah, a hundred percent. There's Story no Story? other competition. Toy Story Four is not gonna win. No, it won't win it. How to Train Your Dragon will win it because this is the last of the trilogy, and none of them have won before. What the fuck does that Wait, have to do with it? Why am I not finding best animated short, best production design, best costume, best, best animated original feature, anime, original cinematography, adapted original? Okay, well, we don't need you to. Read all right, out all right. Loud. Best motion no, picture. I can't find it. There we best go. Best. Motion picture of the year. We got Ford really? versus Ferrari. You don't think Klaus, you don't think Klaus is going to win over How to Train Your Dragon? Nope. I would like Even, Klaus to win, but it's yeah. fine. Yeah, I would like to see Klaus win over How to Train Your Dragon, and I loved How to Train Your Dragon. All right, so we got Best Motion yeah. Picture of the Year nominees, and those are Ford versus Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Parasite. <sighs> uh, it's gonna be tough, dude. I'm torn. I again, I would love to see Joker win over Irishman. I feel like Irishman is gonna win. I think it might. If it doesn't win, if uh, what do you call? It? He doesn't win for director. He will definitely win for best picture. He's gonna win one or the other. Period. There's no if, ands, or buts about that. What's your second choice, though? I want to see Ford versus Ferrari win it. It won't. Yeah. I would probably say... I'm torn between Joker and 1917. Hmm. I I think those two are my... I can't see Joker win, dude. Picture That best picture, I can't. I could. Really? I, I could. I we live in a world that that could actually win best picture. Which I'm okay you with. Know, Personally t- my my choice would be the Joker to win. Period. 
over all these movies. Something tells me that Little Women would win Best Picture for some oh, odd no. fucking reason, dude. If that does, I am done with the fucking <laughs> Academy. I, I am legit done. Like, that's it. I am mm. not even going there again. He'll be back next year. I will yeah, he not. Will. He, not swears, he swears Little Women is a bad movie. Swears. Dude, it is fucking shit. It wasn't bad. Dude, I gave that movie, like two stars on my fucking letter box account because it was that bad. Nah, man. I actually liked it. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that movie. Yeah. It doesn't like you either, okay? <laughs> I Can mean, I would like to see Ford versus Ferrari, but it makes sense that probably I, if he doesn't win for Best Director, Irishman will win. No. Um... I mean, I can see fucking uh, Waititi coming out of fucking no. any uh, out of nowhere and winning for Jojo Rabbit. Not with that subject matter, it will not win in the Oscars. Not with fuckface in the in uh, in uh, what do you call it, the White House. They will not put that up there. They will not put it up there because of the simple fact that it has that subject matter in it, and it's not, you know, cinema, quote unquote. They they won't they won't put that up there. No way. everybody there alrighty yeah I'm here I'm here moving on I'm here alright All right, are we done with the segment yes okay stay tuned that's a quick break when we come at you with our new not so new segment the movie bucket list cue the drums New, not so new segment, the movie bucket list. This is where William has been bestowed these magical posters from the aliens from beyond. They float and everything. They're pretty cool. Maybe one day you'll get to see them. And he basically chooses. No, they're invisible to other people's eyes. You forgot that Mm. part. Sorry, but we could bring it to MegaCon. We could. We could. And what? Sign it and raffle it. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good idea. Hell yeah. Or, you know, we no, could just, you know... This was a yeah. person. I'm not giving away alien technology. <laughs> so, William chooses a, a movie at random, and then we all debate amongst ourselves if it should or should not be on this list. I almost died. almost choked on a fucking burp there. That was weird. <laughs> wow. Okay. William, what do you got for us, Yo. bud? I got a Yo. good movie since we started the Oscar buzz. I figured we would start with a uh, uh, some good Oscar vibes over here. Is um, it a banger, as the kids say nowadays? Uh, no, it's more of a um, what the hell am I watching kind of movie. And then at the end, it like keeps going on and on and on. And then before you know it, boom, over. And you're like, what? And like. You feel like you need like some chocolate and and sit on a bench and then okay. like go play. All right. I did a mute him. Run, <laughs> Arnie, Vietnam. run Forrest, run with your girlfriend. Right with you with the girlfriend, Jenny. Um, yeah. If you haven't figured that out by now, it's one of the Academy Awards. Tom Hanks won without crashing a plane. Uh, Jesus. It's, uh, <laughs> what? To prove me wrong. Forrest Gump. And the movie that features the biggest bitch of all time. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, For- Jenny. Jenny? Janet. The biggest bitch of all time in movie. Oh, jeez, relax. That's a, that's a, wow. That's a heavy statement. It's a truth. The I love this movie. put out with you at the Panther Party. I love this movie. Uh, I do, too. This movie is incredible. I so wait from what you were just how you were describing the movie William do you think that the movie drags on because I kind of got that from what you were talking how you were talking about it uh the first couple times that I watched it it felt like it dragged on a little bit um then again what the hell did it come out um yeah I was like 14 so it definitely felt like it was long it's kind of a long movie um but then as I grew older and I kept, you know, you go back and you, you know, watch it every so often. You're like, Lieutenant okay, Dan. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Lieutenant Dan is the best. Lieutenant oh. Dan, you got legs. Dude, one of my uh, favorite scenes is when he's on the boat, um, <laughs> on his on his shrimping boat, and uh, Lieutenant Dan comes up to like the dock, and he's like, Lieutenant Dan! And he just runs off the boat, and like just goes into the water, and the boat just crashes into the dock. Crashes. Yeah, it's just so cute, man. It's such a, it's a nice, um, it's very sad, yes, but it's also a very nice, warm feeling that you get in your, in your, in your <laughs> loins when you, when you want, maybe not in your loins, in your heart. <laughs> wow. But, uh, it's sad. I cry like a baby in this movie. Every time. Aww. Every time. That's Aww. nothing new. No, it is not, but let's go home. But this is definitely like one of those precursor movies like where I wasn't a bitch back then, but it was like the the one movie that would just break me and then everything breaks me nowadays. I don't get sad in this movie at all. Really? You don't get You don't get sad ever. You're fucking dead inside, aren't you, dude? All Naomi, right. So... Naomi, I know you're listening. Like is he always <laughs> dead inside? What is wrong with him? Save him, please. So, all right. Note. So, I got a little bit of uh, movie trivia for you boys. Yes, go ahead. Especially to you, uh, uh, Mr. Lewis. You forgot my name there. Fucking stroke. Gary Sinise and Tom Hanks have been in three movies together. Obviously, Forrest Gump being one of them. Who again? Without googling it, it. Huh? Who? Tom Hanks? No, no, no. Who? And... Who and to, Who and Tom Hanks? I've been in, in three movies. Gary Sinise. Okay. I would say... I've been in three movies together. One of them obviously being Forrest Gump. What are the other two movies? Forrest Gump, Apollo 13, and... Yeah. <laughs> this is where he stalls while he's, sequ- he's quietly Googling it. I am he's, not. He's furiously like mm-hmm. typing on his phone. I am he's like, not. He's like, fuck. Says the kid with the hand in the cookie jar. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know the other one. That last one, I definitely Brandon? don't know. I don't. I I know it was Apollo Apollo thirteen, but I, I didn't know the. the... Yep, Apollo thirteen. The other one is and there's another tear jerker. <laughs> oh shit! With John Coffee. Yes, yes. The fucking Green Mile. Oh my god, yes. The Green Mile. Oh yeah, shit! I f- totally forgot he was in that movie. I had to rattle my brain on that one. Fuck. Um, but yeah, those are the three movies that they have been together, um, which all three of them are like incredible movies. I mean, Bangers. That's the kids say you know, nowadays. I love this show because it, over time I've noticed that I have put words in your vocabulary like banger, low key, and it it warms my heart. Or it warms my heart. Or did you say or? <laughs> Well, you said Loki, so I said Thor. Oh, I thought you said whore. <laughs> I, no, we all had it our, that in our vocabulary. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, oh. I've, I've been using that word since I was six. <laughs> Jesus. <since you're... laughs> I thought I used to call my mama. Oh, my God. Wow. That got dark okay. real quick. Okay, um, back to so Forrest did, Gump. Do you know the guy's <laughs> name who played Forrest Gump Jr. at the end of the movie? Yeah, Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, okay. Well, not everybody knows that, so, you know. Why, was that a secret? No, it wasn't a secret. It's like, like I said, like not everybody knows that. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know yeah. That you know, the, you know yeah, I he see was dead super, people die. Yeah, he was super young. This is before The Sixth Sense, you know, before he got um, fat. Because he's fat nowadays. Have you, seen, have you guys seen him recently? I'm not, yeah. I'm not shaming him. I'm I, fat myself. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, I have. Yeah, no, I I saw him in uh, Future Man on Hulu. He's I. All right, so do you guys want to hear my take on this one? If we I have mean, no, to, no, gonna tell us anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> what would you guys give the rating for this movie? Let's let's go with that. A uh, nine. Well, here comes the four. Give it the four. <laughs> um, I would give it probably a I good. Would... <laughs> I give it a nine. I mean, it's it's a yeah. good movie. It covers a lot of history, and it, and for the technology they had back then, the way that they incorporate 
um, Gump in actual oh, yes, historical yes. footage. It was actually well done. Yeah, he meets um, uh, JFK. He meets John Lennon. And who does he meet? Who's the third person? Uh, he, meets? he meets Clint. Oh, he meets Lyndon, uh, right? Um, Lyndon B. Johnson? Lyndon. And yes. yeah, because he's like, I caught, you know, I got shot in the butt talks. And he's like, <laughs> I'd like to see that, son. And he just turns around and drops the pants. Like, <laughs> yeah, show him, show him, Mr. President. <laughs> Your butt talks. All right, let's hear yeah, it, Lewis. Let's hear why you're giving this movie a four. So, the best part of this movie is 100% Tom Hanks' performance. Yes. Um, there's bar none, nothing else. But this is 100% fucking Zemeckis jerking off all over the fucking film and making it like this it, it's pure academy award like here you guys go here's hitting all the marks here we go here we go and then climax at the end and it's like eh, the movie is predictable it's doesn't have anything that's innovative in my in my opinion Tom Hanks carries the performance. Everybody else falls short by a lot. It what? Just, a lot. I'm done. I'm done no, talking. Gary, I'm done talking Gary about this movie. Gary I'm done. Gary so, definitely does not fall. I agree. He does. What, what, what's movie. your rating, bro? Here um, we go. Here, here comes the blow. But the low blow below the five. I mean, I'm waiting for it. Here it comes. I will give it a but five. Hear those drum rolls. A five. Those. You I'll actually give said you talked. You, you just. I don't understand how you rate shit. You just said at the beginning you like this movie. Five. I is do like, like this movie because of Tom Hanks's performance. Five is like mediocre. It is mediocre. Mediocre. Okay, I'm done. Next segment. Stay tuned after this <laughs> quick break I, when we come. Hold on, hold on. We well, haven't said I mean, whether I, we want it on I, the I, bucket I, list. Do it, does it belong on the bucket list? Yes or yes. no? Uh, my yes. answer is no. yes. Nope. Yes, I say yes. And my answer would be probably in the mid fifties. Well, fifty to sixty is where it belongs. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Also, nope. Well, get get fucked. We outvoted you. <laughs> the movie doesn't like wow. you either, asshole. Uh, the movie doesn't like you. <laughs> oh, well, that's got hot. Stay tuned after this quick, quick anyway, break. Moving on to when we come at you segment. live with the main segment of our show, the main review, up in the air. Yes. <laughs> I'll never, wow. I'll never understand how you rate shit, dude. I'll never get it. It makes absolutely no fucking sense to me. This movie's great. It's a four. I... Ne- what? So, I love this movie. How do you I love it first... and give it a five? That makes no so, sense. I would personally give this movie a nine. I just wanted to cause a little bit of havoc and... You piece of shit. I hate when you do this, bro. And I fought <laughs> arguments that people put online and stuff like that, but I just I really wanted to fuck with you guys. <laughs> I fucking hate you, god damn it. <laughs> I hope you put this in the show, you fuck. <laughs> Three, two, one. All right, guys. <laughs> Welcome back for the main segment of our show. The main review live. Lewis's pick up in the air. Live. Live. All right. So live. up in the air uh, stars um, George Clooney, uh, Anna Kendrick, and uh, what's her name? Fuck, I forgot her name. Farrah Far- Far- Farmiga. Farmiga. There you go. Thank like you. For Micah. But yeah. Um, so George Clooney also is also Jason Bateman, Sam Elliott, J.K. Yeah, Simmons, yeah, Annie they McBride. They yeah, they're they're not important. Zach Galifianakis. Yeah, for like two seconds, he's in the movie. Uh, so George Clooney is a um, basically he works for a company where other companies hire him. They bring him in to fire people for them because their boss, the bosses, are a bunch of pansies and they don't want to do it themselves. So yep. George Clooney is a very um, isolated man. He's constantly traveling. Uh, I think at one point in the movie he says he traveled like what was it oh, like over three hundred days or some shit in the year. Yeah, three hundred and twenty six days. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, which is some ridiculous amount. And basically, um, the company that he works for hires um, Anna Kendrick's character 
to basically kind of revolutionize the way that they do this whole um, letting go of people. And basically, it's them traveling together. And basically, I'm so sorry about the dogs. I don't know if you hear them in the back. Nope. Oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Great technology. Um, and basically, their relationship and stuff like that and how she, he, she's like young and sparkly and he's kind of just like this recluse and just kind of uh doesn't give a shit kind of dude and yeah that's the movie of course it goes i but yeah i love this movie because and the reason i wanted to share it with you guys is because of the the whole like character of george clooney that that he has and the the whole segment where he's actually uh, what do you call it? A keynote speaker type of thing, and he's doing this whole speech about the the backpack and all the weight that we carry on on our lives and with our lives, with all the people that we surround ourselves and uh, allow to to take a piece of us every time that we're with them and all that stuff. And I think that holds true to a lot of people in their twenties and stuff like that. I think that's what this movie is trying to get across. This is the feeling that you feel when you have when you're in your 20s, you don't want to be carrying the weight of, of all these people around with you. You don't want to settle down. You don't want all this like luggage, quote unquote, put on you when you're in your 20s. You want to have that freedom to explore and all that stuff in your teens and 20s. And then in your 30s, that's when you get when you allow yourself to to carry that luggage, because then you realize, oh, shit, I do want that. And the characters in this film, that's how I feel is portrayed in this. I, feel, I don't know. I feel very uh, bad for him, for George Clooney's character. I don't. I don't know, man. Like, spoilers, I guess. I'm going to, well, I'm going to, I'm personally, I'm going to talk about stuff at the end. So if you don't want to hear it, then fast forward. But. Or- or sit down, watch the movie, yeah. and then come back to the, yeah, to the do, show because do, or, it's something. Or do that. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I feel bad for him. Like, you know, he finally decides, like, I want to settle down and actually, like, uh, start something with someone. And then she just, like, throws it in his face, you know? Yeah, but also at the same time, that's real life. That's... You know, we all have that one person that made us realize, that made us change in our lives. Mm-hmm. They they made us push past everything. As much as I talk shit about my marriage and stuff like that, she was amazing because in that sense, she actually made me, she pushed me beyond mm-hmm. to oh, what I am now. And if it wasn't for the experiences that I had in that marriage, as negative as some of them were, they mm-hmm. actually made me, in the end, a better person. The same way that I, I think about like my parents and all that stuff that happened with them, it actually made me a better person because it made me realize a lot of different things that I didn't know. That that ending, well, not the ending, the the like when she when it's revealed that she's married and has like kids, like really fucked with me for some odd reason. I was not expecting yeah. that. <laughs> I wasn't either when I, I first was, saw this. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> um, and it's just like I don't know that the movie's sad. I think at the end of the movie, like when he lets go of the luggage, like I feel like he's like legitimately alone. Yeah, he has no one. I think so too, and but that that's what it's about. It's about that the the fact that we all are alone at one point in our lives, and I think it's important for us to realize that we're not meant to be alone. We're meant to be in groups of people. That's what humans are, that we're a very group centered uh, race and that, that we're, you yeah. Know, us as humans, we need to be in groups of people. That's how we, we work things do out. We, That's how we grow. Do we know? We do. Yeah. I, th- oh. I think being isolated, it, it really fucks with people. It does. Why do you look think... at the shining? <laughs> why do you <laughs> why do you think they put like like prisoners and shit in isolation? It fucks with them and stuff like that, and it's not good. Like you know, I say like I like to be alone, but then there's every so often where I'm like, oh, I want to see a person. You know, I like seeing another human being's face talking to another person. 
Yeah, William. Also, remember, you live in New York, where you have too many people <laughs> around you. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that yeah, the fucking you, truth. But you also have your girlfriend and however many people live in your apartment with you, you know? Like, you're not truly alone. Ever. Ever. Yeah. And plus, we also live in a day and age where social media is a huge thing. So technically, none of us are ever alone, even if we're in our house this is, this is pr- with nobody around. Yo, I uh, you know this movie's dated when he says MySpace. Yeah. He talked about I mean, MySpace. Dude, I really okay. love this movie. I love the message of like this, this movie. movie. I, I like this movie. Really, it, 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 it struck a chord with me when I first watched this because I was going through a lot of shit. And it really hit home when I saw this. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I thought everyone's performance, I, I think that they all, like the three of them did a really, really good job. Specifically, George Clooney. Yeah. He's a he's a dreamy dude. I dude, know I see, and he I know I he knows how to movie. act. I I just look at him and I look I see Batman with 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 ass and nips. That's all I think about. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for Well, I mean, I see her and I'm like, where's our her aka friends because she's going to break out an a cappella song any minute now. Very true. And that never happened. Very true, very true. Dude, one of my favorite so, things, you know. Yeah. One of my favorite parts is the the part with um um oh my god what's this actor's name that he's really famous the older guy that they fire yeah uh the uh, Sam Neil no the, Sam no Elliott? not Sam Neil the, not Sam Elliott the the he's, one that plays he's the pilot uh J Jonah Jameson uh, oh J K Simmons, Simmons. yeah J- yes J K Simmons that whole segment where he's telling him look I see on your resume that you know that uh, what do you call it you actually did culinary arts why don't you do that. Why don't you go back to that? Find your passion in life. I that five minutes of dialogue is I hold that up in like probably top hundred scenes of all time in cinema for me because of the fucking dialogue. It's just it really struck home to me because I'm like, you're fucking right, dude. Why do you want to work in this like dead end job nine to five that, yes, it helped you through a crisis in your life to get started And you just meant it to be a job that you would work for six months and then move on. And you got stuck there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there's whole movies based on that plot. But these five minutes of this dialogue hold true. It it holds better. uh, What do you call it? It holds better than the whole movie of Fight Club in those five minutes. And it's the same exact story that's that's being played out. This guy that's that, you know, for lack of a better word, is stuck in this dead end job and is getting fired. And this guy is telling him, look, this is a wake up call. This isn't a, a dead end. This is a wake up call. Go home and do what you love. Find something that you love to do. And I think we all want to do that, dude. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've said, like, fuck this. I just I want to quit my job. And for everybody out there listening that from my job, I don't want to quit my job. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> just in case of my bosses, but uh, what do you call it? No, like I, I want to just say, fuck it all and just go and, and apply for something in, in TV or film and just dip. But at the same time, I don't because I do what I love. I love talking about movies and that's what I do with you guys every week. And I have a passion and I follow that passion with this podcast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, there's two ways to approach it, but I think this film woke me up when it, when I saw this film was pretty much, I started the idea of doing something, talking about movies and all that stuff. And then the, the YouTube came around that Brandon and I started and it just evolved from there, but this movie was the catalyst for that. I don't think I've ever said that to anybody, but yeah, this film was the catalyst for that, and I, it changed my life. Even, I didn't even know that. I like it, it. Changed my life. I like it, it. Really changed my life. Um, it's a it's a good movie. I I just think that it's, I don't know. Inherently, it's just, we're all alone, and it's kind of like depressing. But hey, that's life, right? Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, I would give it an Ocho an eight. How about you? Okay. I would give this a nine point five out of ten, but that's also because personal yeah, connection. A bias, bitch. How about you, yeah. William? Um, I'll give it about seven and a half. Okay. Okay. I okay. def I definitely think uh, their performance elevates things a lot in this movie. Agreed. Uh, but yeah, definitely check it out. It's uh, streaming on the Netflix. Yeah. <sighs> And uh, there's a wonderful, I, I want to say this one line that, that Clooney says, I'm like my mother, I stereotype because it's quicker. Yes. I, I fucking love that line because I've said that how many times in my life because I'm like, yes, that whole thing where, where he's in the in the airport yes. and he's like, no, 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 go with the Asians because they're quick and they, they pack light. I was like, oh my God, yes. That's very true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so, end rant. End rant. All right, guys, <laughs> stay tuned at this quick break when we come at you not live, never live with the final segment of our show the individual reviews. All right, guys, welcome back for the final segment of our show, the individual reviews. William is going to be going first this week. I am, I am, and it is a hell of a tearjerker that I am coming with you, at you. Um, coming with you? Coming, coming with, with you, yeah. No, coming that's it. Yo, I can't say I've ever right. done that with a friend before, dude, but there's always a first. Speaking of coming with me, make sure you tune in to Candlelit Blowjobs. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> hey, I plug hey, the man, plug, right? Plug their show, baby. Um, so, mine uh-huh. is a 1993, <laughs> uh, it falls under fantasy romance. Hello? Yeah, no, you're yep. good, you're good. Because you, like, stopped oh, for okay. a second there, and we're like, uh... <laughs> and it, so it stars, uh, so we're talking 1993, so it's before the big downfall, but it's got Robert Downey Jr., it's got Kira Sedwick. Charles Grodin, Tom Sizemore, B.B. King, David Tamer, uh, Alfred Woodward, uh, Woodard, my apologies. Uh, and I think that's like the last of the really big names. It's not a big cast. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's 14 roles in the entire movie. That's it. Um, of which six of them are the main ones. Uh, it's about this. Oh, so the movie is Heart and Souls, uh, and it is streaming on Cinemax. And I found by pure uh, chance, because I was on uh, Amazon Prime, and I was like, "Oh, I wonder if they carry, you know, this movie." And sure enough, it, the Amazon Prime doesn't carry it. The add on Cinemax carries it. So if you have that. This is a movie that you definitely want to check out. Is this when Robert Downey Jr. was taking a lot of drugs? It, it was right before like his big downfall because mm, his downfall mm. was like his spiraling was like ninety six, ninety seven. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Actually, no. Sorry. 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 I was already driving at the time, so ninety eight, ninety nine. Okay. Okay. Um. And basically, it's these four different people from all from four different walks of life. They end up getting on this bus. The bus driver gets distracted watching these two, this couple driving next to him, kind of like getting hands with each other. Um, there's a car that, like, he loses control of the bus. He almost hits this other car that has a couple in it who is rushing to the hospital to have a baby. Uh, the bus flips over, goes over a bridge, they all die. And he, the driver gets pulled up into heaven, or up up there anyway, and the four uh, main characters, which is 
uh, Keir Sedwick, uh, Alfred Woodard, Charles Grodin, and Tom Sizemore, they end up being attached to this newborn who we see him grow. And he, obviously, when he gets older, his name's Thomas, uh, is played by Robert Downey Jr. And they're trying to figure out what, you know, why they're stuck here. And come to find out that they were given a chance to try, because Robert Downey Jr. is the only person that can see them. He can communicate with them. He can physically see them. Nobody else can. Come to find out that they were supposed to try and, through him, close out those final things that would have fulfilled their life. Mm. Like Kira Sedwick was running away from commitment because uh, her boyfriend wanted to her to move in with him, and she was like, no, and she was trying to run away from commitment again. Uh, Tom Sizemore, uh, he was like a burglar, and he had stolen this thing from a kid for this person that paid him a lot of money, and he felt bad about it, and he was on his way to rectify it, and he died. Uh, Grodin was a performer, but every time he went to audition, would get stage fright. So he could never actually perform on stage. And Woodard was just, she wanted to see her kids one more time. Hmm. So then finally they figured this out and, you know, uh, they, they go about trying to figure, you know, how to go about doing this. In the meantime, Downey Jr. was, or RDJ, um, he doesn't want anything to, with, to, with, to do with them because they kind of like traumatized his childhood. <laughs> so it's it's definitely there's definitely a lot of comedy. Um, be uh, you know the, the, just the fact BB King is in it and you get to see him play his beautiful guitar, um, which is great. Um, Why are you laughing, Louis? It's a great movie. It is definitely a hard. You, you will cry. I don't care who you are. There will be at least one scene out of many that will just tug your heart. And My cousin like, is dead inside, up. so he will not cry. I've never no, seen this movie. I think... Neither have I. Huh? I've never, I've seen, never seen, seen it. Seen it? Never. If, if you get a chance to see it, uh, watch it. Because I think they, I think you'll enjoy it. I mean, you both got girlfriends. You think that if you don't enjoy it, they will. Okay, but, okay. Um, and the main, like, the soundtrack is great, but, like, the main song in the movie is um, Walk Like a Man from Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. Oh, okay. Um, and nice. there's one scene where, like, they end up singing a cappella, which is great. But I definitely give this movie, like, a good eight and a half, nine out of ten. Uh, my sister introduced it to me years ago when it first came out. I had gotten to see it uh, uh, many times, and it's been a lot of years since I got to see it, so... He definitely tugged at the heart. Uh, it was also 2 o'clock in the morning. And so I was really overtired. Uh, so, you know, we all get over-emotional when we're tired. But still, um, watch it. Like, there's really not much more I can say about this. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoy it. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. I'll check it out. Lois, why don't you go for us? So, uh, this film that I'm going to bring up is uh, streaming on Netflix. It is mm -hmm. written by the writer of When Harry Met Sally and You Got Mail. Oh, yeah. So, it's oh, yeah. uh, Nora Ephron. And it stars Amy Adams, Stanley Tucci, Meryl Streep. Have you guys figured it out yet? No. No. Julie and Julia. Oh, that this one. is the stored uh the story of uh, <laughs> the Julia stored... Child. <laughs> the stored of what? The stored. Oh. oh my god. The story of Julia Childs, and I I personally really really enjoyed this movie. I didn't think I would enjoy it, but you know I. I'm gonna go I was... on a limb and say that your girlfriend had you watch this. Actually, her. she didn't. She really oh, wow. did it. But I will definitely give her a shout out because I was stuck between reviewing this one or Don't Fuck With Cats. And she kind of... Oh, my God. So, I started watching Don't Fuck With Cats. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Is it that, is this great, is by the way. Is, is that what we were watching? <laughs> yeah, that's what we were watching. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. 
yeah so um this is a shout out to naomi this is 100 percent. this is basically you made me review this but in the sense that you didn't make me watch it but you made me review it so uh julie and julia uh it's the story of julia childs and the story of her like you know basically reinventing herself which is i didn't know the story of of uh, what do you call it childs at all and Yo. seeing it done this way was fucking great have, but, and stanley tucci i mean come on have you guys ever seen oh. her cooking show never yeah dude it is fucking hilarious if you want a, it is if you want a good laugh watch julia child her her cooking show it's fucking hilarious what makes it even funnier is that like you watch this grandmother in a kitchen day in and day out or episode in and episode out like she's your she's the grandmother that everybody wants and then you remind yourself she used to be a spy yeah like full blown this lady was a spy before she retired and went Oh, I think I'll put on a cooking show for people to watch. <laughs> it's, my... it's like, what? Yeah, How do this... you go from spying it's fucking great. to being a cook? It's fucking great. And the, the movie Meryl Streep, let me tell you, I cannot speak enough about Meryl Streep. I've turned a corner with her, and she's a fucking chameleon <laughs> actress, dude. Like, Why do you think she's fucking nominated for anything and everything she does? Dude, she is great. Like, I have never been a fan of Meryl Streep until recently. And just, I, I'm just, my mind is blown every time I see her in a role because she completely obliterates the role, first of all, in the best way Did possible. Did you watch her uh, Into the Woods? I actually haven't yet, but it is on my list now. It is a musical. I'm warning you. I know. I've been told. But okay, I've been just, told that it's a good not- musical. So no, um it, it's it's not compared to the actual show but it's it's no oh, whatever but yeah. anyways so yeah Ju- uh, Julia Childs um this is the story of this woman that's a uh turns blogger which is Amy Adams's character and she is basically blogging about going through the whole cookbook of Julia Childs and going through every single recipe within a year and she blogs about each recipe and all that stuff and her trials and tribulations that she goes through. But at the same time, she's also going through her relationship and her marriage, kind of, you know, hitting rocks and stuff like that during that time frame because her schedule is so hectic trying to cook everything that's on that cookbook. And it's it's an interesting story. Me personally, I enjoyed more the Julia Childs part of the film rather than the Amy Adams part of the the film. I can't even remember her, the name of the character. That's how little it, it mattered to me, honestly. Like it mattered more what the parts that between Meryl Streep and uh, Stanley Tucci, because their interaction is just fucking hilarious. And I loved it. Um, William, you've seen it, right? It's been a while since I've seen it, but yes, I've definitely seen it. I think I saw it the year it came, like the year after it came out. So we're talking 2010 when I saw it. It's been like 10 years, but it it was a good movie. It was entertaining. It's, you know, not one that I ran back and and jumped on, Um, but. Yeah. But what um, do you think of the, what do you think? Did you like the character that was writing the blog or did you like the Julia Child's character better? Um, I mean, I was always a Julia Child fan. So that's definitely the part that um, interested me the most or that I liked the most, to to, to put it that way. Um, yeah. Plus, I know this is going to like shock a lot of people, but... I'm not that big of an Amy Adams fan. Nothing what? wrong with Amy Adams. It's just not my cup of tea for when it comes to the majority of the roles that she has done. She's done some amazing roles. I am not taking away from her whatsoever. Um, 
Uh, I mean, like, I'm really not a big fan of her in Man of Steel, but that's also me not being a fan of Man of Steel. But, um, what was it? She, she was in Night in the Museum. She was like, I liked her in Arrival. I thought that she was good. It's a banger. Um, not a fan. It was a banger, yeah. Uh, <laughs> she was good in uh, The Fighter. I definitely enjoyed her in that. Yeah, so, I mean, what, which one did you like better? Did you like Amy Adams, or did you like uh, Stanley Tucci and, and Meryl Streep? Uh, Stanley Tucci and Meryl Streep. Right? Okay. Brandon, have you seen this one or no? I have not, no. Oh, you should definitely check it out. I think you would actually enjoy this with the girlfriend. A I, good, I saw movie. it. I was on... I, I thought- on Netflix, and I saw it because my my pick is also from Netflix, and it kind of came up, but uh, yeah, I didn't watch it. <laughs> that would have been hilarious if this was the one that you were going to review. <laughs> oh man! Um, oh, like the, like the week that me and you almost destroyed uh, Brandon's pick. Yeah, yeah seriously. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so this one I give an eight out of ten. I thoroughly enjoyed this. It was fun. I really was surprised with it. I really didn't expect to enjoy it, and I really did. So, so yeah, that's my pick for the week, Brandon. Okay, so I'm gonna be round, rounding it out. My pick is also from. Is that a fat joke? No. no ah, it... rounding <laughs> it up. I'm so funny. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. My my pick is also from uh, Netflix. This is a movie I've seen before, but it kind of came up on the Netflix, and I was like, man, I really like this movie, and I'm gonna. I haven't seen it in a, in a while, so I was like, I'm gonna watch it again. And that is Catch Me If You Can. Ah, you son of a bitch. Oh, it was Amy Adams. Yes. Why, why son of a bitch? What did I do? Was that uh, it? Because I was going to I was gonna review that next week. <laughs> 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 I really like this movie. Uh, so this movie is, um, it stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks and uh, Christopher Walken. And Tom Hanks does not crush a plane. Yes, and Amy Adams, and basically, uh, Leo is plays Frank Abagnale. DiCrapio? Uh, shut up, man. He's not DiCrapio. What's wrong with you? Do you really not like him? <laughs> Don't you remember the, the, the we couldn't say the name? Respect. Wait, wait, that we couldn't say the name when? Yeah, remember, like, a couple weeks back, we couldn't say the name? Oh. And I, I always get tongue-twisted with it, and I was just, just calling him DiCrapio instead of DiCaprio. Of course you would. Yeah. So... He plays uh, Frank Abagnale Jr. Uh, this movie's based on a true story of um, who basically was a con man, a con artist, where he would like wash checks and all this shit. And uh, Tom Hanks plays this uh, FBI agent that is basically uh, hunting him down. Uh, the movie's really funny. Uh, both of their performances are incredible. Um, like. I forgot how much I enjoyed this movie. I was like, "Oh yeah, let me let me watch this." I, I remember liking. It. I was like, "Well, I really I really like this movie." And man, uh, this movie further cements that I cannot take Christopher Walken seriously. I just can't. I can't. Every time that man speaks, I'm like, "Why do you speak like this? What is this cadence? It's just like um, like this guy from uh, Star Trek, Shatner. Shatner. Thank you, William Shatner." I once did a movie with this girl named Aquafina, <laughs> and this guy Brandon just couldn't take us seriously. So Dude, he never watched her me. movie. It really kills me inside. But um, yeah, the movie's a lot of fun. It definitely feels like a Spielberg movie, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Oh, yes, it yeah, does. no, it does. It uh, does. but yeah, they're they're. This is definitely like the first time. It definitely does. What? It feels like a Spielberg movie. It does. It does. Um, this was, I think, <clears throat> the first film where people were like, "Actually, no, I wouldn't say the first film because uh, Gilbert Grape was pretty good." But what I'm saying is that he should have won something for this film. Uh, DiCaprio is what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, the costume, everything. Yes, what? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Never mind. I had a thought, and it started coming out. I was like, "Wait, no, hold on, wait." So, <laughs> this is not for the show. Um, yeah, <clears throat> man, it's just really good. I think that their performances are when they when they are in the same scene. I think they play off each other very well, and uh, it's just a fun ride. It's definitely a fun, a fun, cool ride to see this uh, 
teenager who was extremely smart, like extremely smart. I don't know how the fuck he did it, but um, I I love I love the part where like he when he gets caught, I think it was Tom Hanks that asks him. He's like, "So how'd you do it?" Oh yeah, and, when he and Gaffer's like, "What?" He's like, "How'd you pass the bar?" Yep. Like, how'd you cheat? And he just goes, "I didn't. I studied the night before." Yep. And then took the <laughs> bar the next day. Yep. And they passed. Yeah. My ex went to law school three years. Was in debt half a million dollars, spent twenty something hundred dollars for the bar, but also and failed. William, you have to. This you, dude read one night. No, well, he he says he studied for two weeks, but also oh, two weeks. Still. Also, also, you got to think that this man, this like Frank Abagnale, must have had a very high IQ. He oh, put, he, did. he he has to. Because for what he does, like the rigmarole that he puts everyone through, which I know is probably, um, you know, they, they probably uh, like turn it up a notch for the movie. But yeah, like my man is smart, dude. Like he was washing checks, like uh, kiting checks, like everything that you can think of and throwing people off his trail. And it's just, I was reading up like he did his first, um, like the actual guy did his first like hoax like uh here let me let me find it da, 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 where is he frank abigail at the while well, you search for that no i yeah yeah go ahead go ahead yeah go ahead, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead uh so uh his first con so this is straight off of wikipedia so i'm gonna read it like straight as it is his first victim was his father who gave abigail a gasoline credit card and a truck to assist him in commuting to his part-time job to get date money Abagnale devised a scheme in which he used the gasoline car to buy tires, batteries, and other car-related items at gas stations, and then asked the attendants to give him cash in return for the products. Ultimately, his father was liable for a bill of $3,400, which is equivalent to $28,394 in 2019. Abagnale was 15 at the time. Jesus. Yes. So, my man's just smart. Like, he... He had a knack for doing this whole shit. But yeah, Lewis, what were you going to say? So, this movie, what do you give this, Brandon, Movie rating-wise? Uh, a nine. Here Let's play this game four. again. A nine. I, I, I enjoy this movie. Here comes the four. I enjoy this movie. <laughs> Yeah, William, I, how about I, you? I know, that, I know that, what do you give this movie, Tone? Um... Well, first, what I was going to say before is that the uh, Tom Hanks has actually made an appearance in three out of our four segments on this show. Oh, wow. Yes. All right. There you go. Stupid, stupid, stupid tidbit of information, but I just thought it was funny. Um, I don't know. I've, I've only seen it once, but I was definitely – having only seen it once and still had know as much as I do and retain as much as I do from it, i probably give it a good eight. Okay. Okay. So uh, here we go. Here, here comes the four. Four. Yeah. What's up, Lewis? What are you giving it? This is a ten out of ten for Woo! me. Oh, it's a coveted ten. This is this is in my top thirty of all time. Really? I did not know that. Okay. Yep. I absolutely love this movie from the editing, the intro that is very much like the the 007 style of the 70s to the music, mm-hmm. the the fucking editing, the fact that that Michael uh what do you call it can did this on a fucking flatbed Studebaker editing bay is just out of this world amazing. Like it, it's just it blows my mind the way that he edited this honestly and then on top of that the the acting both of every single main actor and supporting character in this film is just Mm -hmm. bar none this is spiely at his best this is a hundred percent every single aspect of this film is on point there's not a weak link in the whole film it's a fucking roller coaster ride from zero to to the two hour end credits. Even the fucking credits are exhilarating. And it, it's just holy films this... yeah, aren't done like this anymore. This movie came out the it's... same year that Minority Report came out. Yep. And they were directed yep. by both Steve were directed by Spielberg. That's yep. crazy. Spielberg. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 
And this is such a much better movie. No, get the Minority fuck out Report of here. is movies a, are great. Minority but... Report is awesome. I love that movie. Granted, Catch Me If You Can is a lot better. I'm, but... not, saying, I'm not saying that Minority Report was a bad movie. I'm saying this was a better, much better movie than Minority okay, Report. Okay, okay, I can see that. I can see. Dude, that. this is a two and a half hour long movie, and this feels like maybe ninety minutes at the most. It is a fucking roller coaster from beginning to end, and it, it just it doesn't let up intrigues you it makes you want to go search and find out more about uh abigail or Ab- abigail Abignail. yes there you go yeah Ab- and before yeah. someone writes a very strongly worded email all right <laughs> i just i love this movie from beginning to end this is Spiel- this is why spielberg is going to be considered one of the best directors of all time and is in my opinion one of the best directors of all time he he, he makes movies that are fucking great mm-hmm. and like this is a hundred percent up there. I would probably put this in the top three of Spielberg, for sure. Wow, I don't know about top three of Spielberg, but yeah. So I love this fucking movie. I'm so happy, Brandon, that you brought it up. Hey, there you go. I'm sorry for taking it from you, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just saw it and I was like, wow, it's been a very long time since I've seen this movie. I'm going to watch it. I fucking love this movie. Yeah, I, I, I do too. Really I, I really, it. that's why I, I wanted to watch it. I was like, oh, I like this movie. And uh, yeah, everyone does an incredible job. Like, this definitely shows you that like Leo has like acting chops, you know? Oh yeah, uh, dude. And ev- yeah. everything like that whole like one of my favorite scenes is when he's um when he's in the airport uh at the end and Carl comes in to uh and he's like where are you going? And he's like, oh, I'm leaving. Like, I don't know how you could do this. And then he's like, and then he basically tells him like, no one's chasing. He's like, I'm going to let you go. No one's chasing you. I don't know why. Like that yeah. scene, like that, just that interaction between them is uh, so good. Uh, chef's keys. It's, it's, it's and also the, the phone call, the phone call on Christmas yes. Eve, just that, that whole element in the film. It's just, that they're always, they're always so together great. on Christmas Eve always yeah uh such a good movie uh so yeah if you haven't seen it um it's streaming on netflix i didn't know that until a couple days ago but yeah go do yourself a favor and watch catch me if you can so it's my turn to pick this week and um we're gonna be going with another netflix pick and we're gonna be reviewing drive oh hey oh you don't like it either, William? No, I've just been avoid watching it this entire time. Why? You've never seen it? I've never seen it. Okay. Oh. Well, there okay. you go. Now, now, it's a, now it, 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 I give you a reason to watch Drive. And fuck you, Lewis. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you... Well, this is for next week, but I didn't know you, you didn't like... What the... F- Bro, is that Godzilla? Is that Godzilla? King Ghidorah? Somebody? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I, I, we're we're going to be talking about it, but I guess you don't particularly like Drive? Nah, I don't. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. Now, we have a sneak peek of, of uh, Lewis's opinion on Drive. Here comes the four. Here comes the four. <laughs> I'm going to laugh and... if he's like, I give it a seven. I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here. Why are you like and also everybody out there uh just so you guys know next week we're gonna start that uh voting for for the main review so please be watchful of our facebook page because that's where we're gonna be doing the voting for now and we're gonna have two movies for you to choose from that william will be uh tailoring for us to choose from so please put in the votes and we'll have 24 hours Um... Real quick, are, given the fact we were talking about doing a themed show the following week, do we still want to do the 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 voting? Yeah, but for a themed week. Yeah, but but we're gonna do it like we have to cut the vote off by at least the weekend, so it gives us time to like yeah. watch the show. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. to watch the movie. No, uh, no, no. This will be the choice for next week. 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah, but we have to cut it off in, yeah. in in so we can. Well, we'll talk about this off air. Whatever. Yeah. All right, guys. If you enjoyed our show, of course, listen to our other stuff. We got Madman with a mic, Candlelit Blowjobs. We got Cellar Door, Lewis's Baby, all about Lord of the Rings. We got Wizarding World with a William Phoenix, which is all about the Harry Potters. Uh, we got do- what? What'd you call it again? <laughs> I'm sorry, not Doctor Who in review. Didn't you call it uh, the Whovian Complex? The Whovian Complex. Thank you. Um. That's dropping every uh, what day? On Fridays for now. Fridays for now, I guess, because I don't even yeah, just pay attention to the feed and and you guys it will be dropping in the feed. I um... I don't even know what day Doctor Who airs on anymore. If I'm gonna be quite honest with you, on Sundays. There you go. Uh, all right, and also visit us on manbytesfilm.com our sister site, diversitygeek.org, and, uh, of course, go to the YouTubes and show John some love over on Narcotic Casserole. Thank you, yes. William. Thank you, as always, Mr. Brandon. <laughs> I was like, did he die? Now one. No, Thank I'm you. here. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Brandon. As always, I am Brandon, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of Man Bites Film. Cue the drums. <laughs> Godzilla sound like